able to get it. Because according to the word of God, God is no respecter of person. What God does for one, he can do for us all. Praise God. And the only thing I need to do is put some work on it because faith without works is dead. And if I put some work on that principle, see, you might not be able, glory to God, to figure out ev how everything is going to work out. But if you work the principle of God, it's going to come to pass. I mean, we have to begin, beloved of God, to love the principles of God again. Love the principles of God for your family. Love the principles of God for business. Love the principles of God for your finances. Are you hearing this? Love the principles of God for your spiritual walk with God. And glory to God, sometimes distractions are going to come. But if you just become consistent in the principle. And if you get your eyes off of what doesn't look right after you do it, but say, Father, this is a principle. This is something that you have set up in the word of God, and your principles have power. I mean, your principles have power. If you told me, all right, whatever I ask in your name, that's a principle in your word. If you told me if I pray, Lord God, knowing you hear me, that I have the confidence that, Lord God, I'll have the things I've asked you of, that's a principle in your word. If you told me if I tithe the 10% that you're going to open up the windows of heaven, that's a principle. Somebody said that's a principle. And sometimes we try to get God to override his principle, glory to God, for our procrastination. It does not work that way, beloved. Somebody said I've got to work the principle. And what you have to do, beloved, you have to start to order your life now watch this, around the principles of God. I said order your life around the principles of God. Stop trying to run your life, glory to God, having the principles of God at the bottom and then everything, glory to God, that you have left over, then you apply it to what God told you to do. You have to order your life under the principle of God. And if the principle of God is to pray, then my life has to be ordered after I pray. If the principle of God is for me to tithe and to be given to sow, then everything else under my life, has, it has to come after that. All right, so my, my entertainment comes after I tithe. Y'all help me preach today. I said, I, I said my extracurricular things come after it, and if I don't have t money enough to bowl, go to God, as long as I've obeyed the principle, I'm all right. Because I can throw a ball around in my own backyard. And set up some sticks and kick it. But one thing I will go to bed tonight understanding is that I've obeyed the principle. And he told me if I walk in his principle, the Bible said if I walk upright, that no good thing will he uphold with me. Y'all ain't talking. He said no good thing he's going to uphold from me if I honor his principle. If I honor his principle above my own self, he said, I, Aaron, I'm not going to withhold any good thing for you if you become consistent in the principle. And we have to start to look at the good things that maybe we are not receiving and maybe we are not following the principle. And we have to become a people of standard and a people, glory to God, a people that have some type of alignment that people in our life know you got a standard. Y'all ain't talking here today. You can't let glory, God, glory to God your life be an example to others that you have no standard and no order. That everything's just thrown here, thrown there, thrown here. They're going to have to know something. Y'all talk to me here today. I said they're going to have to know something. They're going to have to know that you are under prayer. Glory to God that they can't call you anytime they want to. That you've got some prayer standards in your life. They're going to have to understand that you got some giving standards, that you have some service in the house of God standards, that sometimes you can't hang out with them because you're serving in the house of God. They're going to have to know something. Y'all ain't talking here today. God, God, that's your greatest witness. You might not be perfect in everything, but my God, I've got some standards. Hallelujah. And me and Jesus, we take care of the rest. But what the world understands is that my life has some order in it. Y'all ain't talking here today. I said my life has some order in it. And glory to God, and you can't control what you can't, can't control. But there are some things you know you can. Are oh, y'all yeah, hear what I'm telling you? I said there are some things that you know you can. Yeah. 
Now, when the prophet comes to Hezekiah, all right, the Bible says Hezekiah, all right, the, the Hezekiah was king at that time. The prophet Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and tells Hezekiah what? He said, get your house in order, all right, for you shall surely die. All right, he said, get your house in order. Get some things in order. There were some things that were not in order in Hezekiah's life. Glory to God, if it was so, then Isaiah would not have had to come and tell him to bring alignment to some things. Hezekiah turns to the wall. We like to, God got focus on the part about uh, uh, Hezekiah turning to the wall, but I want to focus to the part, all right, of the things that Hezekiah didn't have in order. Because God does not have to come to rebuke and correct you when you, God got understand and take his word for face value. Y'all ain't talking. See, you want, see, sometimes what we want is we want people to call us out and people to talk to us and rebuke us, God, God, and, and tell us what to do. No, you've got his word right there in your hands, hopefully. You've got his word right there on your table. You've got his word riding in your car every day. Take that word, God, God, align your life by it. And you won't need a prophet to come and tell you nothing. Y'all ain't talking. And if they do come to tell you something, it's just by the Spirit of God that they're bringing your awareness to something. All right, but your life has some order. Y'all ain't talking. You talking about receiving prophetic downloads of God? Start to put your life in order. All right, based on the principle. Somebody said principle power. I mean, based on the principle of the word of God, glory to God, and there's no slight to any one of us, glory to God, there's some things in all of our lives that we can bring some more order to, some more refinement to, some more discipline to. Amen. Glory to God, and then strengthen that thing, strengthen that thing, add some work on that thing, are you understanding this? And then see God begin to progress you because of the principle that you're honoring. When the word of God tells us to honor, all right, honor the Lord with all of our substance. He's just not talking about our resources. He's talking about the substance of our being, the substance of who we are. The word of God says, what is that in Deuteronomy? Love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, all thy might, all thy heart. Love God. Love God enough to honor his principle. Love God enough to honor, all right, the things that he's given you, all right, to bring some order in his life. You do not want to live a house that has no frame are you hearing this because at any time i don't know how it's going first of all i don't know how the roof's going to hold on to it without a frame and let's just say you've got a crane suspending the roof in midair glory to god you don't want to go to sleep thinking that one day that crane suspension is going to drop and that's how many times we live our lives with no frame and we're just waiting on the next big thing to come and wipe out everything we work for. But when your life has frame and structure, you don't have to worry about that. Y'all ain't talking because you know the roof is not going to come down. Are you understanding this? You know that there's something connected to your foundation. You already have Jesus. He's your foundation. Y'all hear me? I'm not talking about you not being saved. I'm not talking about you not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about your life has some, having some framework. Because what we're doing is we are building on Jesus. Oh, you talking about on that solid rock I stand? All other ground is sinking sand? Are you understanding this? You are building on Christ. What have you built in your life as a principle after you received him? I mean, after you received him, what have you built in your life as a principle, as a frame? Through God's word. Through God's word. Through God's word. All right. All right. When we look at Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse number 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 3. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number three. All right, the, that first verse says, what, what now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it, verse number two, the elders obtain what a good report. Verse number three says, for we know that the worlds, worlds were do what? Framed. All right, worlds were framed by what? The word of God. Talk to me. The worlds were framed by what? The word of God. All right, we're just not talking about the earth. All right, we're talking about everything, the universe, everything, the environments and the atmospheres, your surroundings, purpose, destiny. All of that has to be framed by what? The word of God. If it's going to have power. Amen. Now, you can frame it by some other things, but it's not going to have power. 
You could frame your world by the expectations of people, but it's not going to have power. Are you hearing this? You could frame it by your own feeling about your own self, but it won't have power. What gives it power is, all right, when you frame it using the principles of what God said. Amen. Is this good to you yet? Yes. It's good to me right now. He said, for by faith, we understand the worlds were framed, structured, aligned, all right, by the word of God, all right, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You talking about operating, all right, and invisibilities and, and potentials and possibilities and, and bringing down the, all right, the kingdom of heaven into the kingdom of this earth. You talking about pulling down imaginations and dreams, all right, that's the only way you're going to manifest it when you first frame some things in the natural you want to you want to make all right that kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven build a frame for it <laughs> did you hear what i said i said you if you want to if you want to pull out of the spirit realm your promises if you want to pull out of the spirit realm your destinies build a frame for it to live in oh god y'all are you hearing this i said if you want it build a frame for it don't invite me over to your house, all right, if there's no house on the land yet. Y'all, 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 come on, people. Y'all are hearing I'm telling you? So you know what we do is, all right, we're down there praying, God, all right, thy kingdom come on earth huh, as it's already done in heaven. Now, God, bring it into my existence. Huh? God, bring it into my world. And you bring all that power, all, I mean, anointed down. I mean, fiery intercession. You know God heard you and God knows he heard you too. But he also understands that you're pulling down something in this earth that you've not built anywhere for it to live in. Y'all, 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 Exodus, Exodus 25. I'm going to fit all this into one of these points because this isn't even what I was going to preach. But this is good to me. Tell your neighbor, this is good to me. This is good to me. Exodus chapter 25. All right. The Lord starts to talk now. He starts to talk and he's talking to Moses. God knows he has power. He has been with these people all this time. He has brought them from Egypt. Y'all are talking. He has brought them from Egypt. All right. All right. Opened up the divide of the Red Sea or all the armies, not just the armies, but the chariots and all the horses and the horsemen. All right. They have drowned. All right. They won't even see that enemy no more. They, they already know the power of God. He leads them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Right. All right, they are following the Spirit of God. But then one day, all right, the Lord says, I want to, dem listen to this. He says, I want to demonstrate something in your life that you have never seen before. Amen. Now, they have seen some great things, haven't they? They have seen plagues and all of these things and how God's delivered them. And you've seen some great testimonies in your life. But God said that is of no comparison to the things I'm about to do for you. He says, but this time, all right, the only thing that's going to bring this new manifestation is a frame that's going to handle it. Yes. A structure in your life that will handle it. Because the mo most of the time, the only reason why we've not maintained what God's given us before is because it didn't have a structure to stay in. It didn't have any type of structure to live in. We didn't have any type of principles that would cause that thing to be maintained and cause that thing to grow and cause that thing to flourish. It came in our life without structure and it left without structure. Amen. Are you understanding this? As fast as it came in, all right, it went out even faster than that. Why? Because there were no structures or no containers for it. Amen. So in Exodus chapter 25, the Bible said the Lord begins to speak to Moses. And what does he, he, he tell us here? He says, all right, tell the people to bring me an offering. Somebody said, bring me an offering. Y'all hearing us? He says, tell the people, bring me an offering. All right, he uses, 
He uses the, the favor, all right, that they had in Egypt, all right. Remember when he told them before they left Egypt, go to the people that hold you in captivity and tell them to give you of their gold, give you of their silver, the same things that restricted you and binded you. All right, now, now go back to those same things. All right, tell your neighbor, we're going to have to go back. I mean, every place that would have told you no before, you're going to have to go back. You're going to have to make a plan now. Why? Because your life has a new level of favor on it. Somebody say, yes, Lord, to that. Somebody say, my life has a new level of favor on it. Glory to the Lamb of God. When I asked the first time, I didn't have this level of favor. But because I've been walking with God, I've been honoring the principle of God, I've got newfound favor on my life. Somebody shout, yes, Lord, in here. My life has newfound favor on it. Yes. Praise God. And I'm not going to let last year's no stop me. I'm going back again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. And I'm going to utilize my new favor. Yes. I said I'm going to utilize my new favor. I'm going to put a demand on my new favor. Yes. But I'm going to build some structures before I go. I'm going to build some frameworks in my life before I go because I don't want the favor of God to hit my failure in obeying God's principle. See, we're trying to operate in the favor of God, but we're failing at the principles of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You can't say, God, give me favor in finance. God, give me favor in business. God, give me favor in my family. God, give me favor on the job. But you are failing at the principle of God. When you go to ask God for his favor, at least God see, let God see that you are consistent in his principle. Woo! I might be going, glory to God, without a dime in my pocket. But one thing I do know is I've got principle power. Y'all ain't talking here today. You might not have a whole lot of people with you, but you've got principal power. Yes, yes. And because you've got principal power, you're walking in there just like you got millions in your bank account. I've got principal power. Y'all ain't talking here where the word of God told me not to store up riches on this earth, but to lay up my treasures in heaven. He told me where my treasure, where, where, where my treasure is, there my heart will be also. And when I've obeyed the principle of the tithe and the offering, I'm going into every business meeting. I'm going into every car lot. I'm going into every real estate office, understanding that I've got a bank. Y'all ain't talking. And my bank is called the principal power of God. Somebody say the principal power of God. God. Glory. I am a shatter. Hallelujah. People, listen, obey the principle of God. I don't care what you see or what you understand or what you can even think of. Honor God in his principle. If God tells you to pray without ceasing, honor God in his principle. If God told you to forgive those that despitefully use you, honor God in his principle. If God told you to love your enemies, honor God in his principle. If God tells you to treat others as you would like yourself to be treated, honor God in his principle. Because whenever it's time for you to operate in the favor of God, you have some principal power reinforcing you. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? They went to those Egyptians and glory to God, if, if they have gone before that time, they would have beat them. They would have talked about them. They would have thrown them back into more affliction. But because the power of God was on them and they had newfound favor, the Bible said they gave willingly and quickly. They were just trying to get them out of there. There are some things that are about to spit you out. Glory to God, not out of disgust, but out of favor. Somebody said, I'm coming out by favor. Favor. I'm coming out by favor. I'm coming out by favor. We created the mantra was that last year that God's graced our life for good things and God will finance our lives with favor. That if God's going to finance your life with favor, I want you to become obedient, Lord God, to the principle of God as you have never obeyed. And if you've slacked up on the principle of God, you better jump back on today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If you slacked up on any principle of God, where well maybe you haven't been loving right, maybe you haven't been forgiven right, maybe you haven't been praying right, maybe you haven't been decreeing and declaring God's word right, I want you by the Holy Ghost to get yourself together right now and say, you know what? I'm going to operate in this principle power. I'm going to operate in because I have not seen as much as I could have seen if I was obedient and consistent in the principle power of God. Somebody said principle power. Power. Glory to God. Just doing what God tells us to do. 
Matthew 6 and 33 says what? He says, all right, seek first the kingdom of God. All right, that word, that, that idea of kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. Somebody say God's way of doing things. When he says seek first the kingdom of God, he says seek first the way God would have you to do it. I want us to go back to asking God, how do you want me to do this? How do you want me to order this? Or after I follow the word, what do you want me to do after that? What are the things that you want me to do after I've obeyed what you told me? He says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Stand right standing with him. How do you stand right standing with God? By honoring his principle. Are right. oh, you understand? Then he says what? And all these things would be what? Added unto you. You will have a magnetic attraction to prosperity. All right. Like you've never seen before in your life. If you honor the principle of God. If you stop being so sleepy and honor the principle of God. Are you hearing this? If you discipline your life, glory to God, and you're not, you, you don't have all these excess drainings out of you, you won't be so tired. Amen. Are you understanding this? If you just build some type of structure, and glory to God, you, I know you might, you might, you might say, well, uh, Apostle, you're trying to tell me to order my life like I'm a, on a schedule at work. If you know that's what it's going to take for you to obey the principle of God, then do it. If you've got to set alarm clocks and reminders and posters everywhere in order for you to set up a discipline in your life, do it. Because you need to see some things happen in your life by the favor of God. And it's going to take your discipline to do it. Praise the Lamb of God. He says, seek first the way God would have you to do it. Stand right standing with him. And all these things will be added unto you. Right? All right. All right. So, so, so back there in Exodus chapter 25. The Lord comes to Moses and tells Moses, all that favor they came out of Egypt with has not been for nothing. Has not been for nothing. He said, I don't just want them to hold those things around. But what I do want is I want to demonstrate some new power in their life. And let, let me say this to you guys. All right, all right. It's time for some new manifestations. I mean, new manifestations by the power of God. It's time for some new demonstration. It's time for some things to happen in your life by the power of God as you set up some more structure and some more solid structure. Stop building your life off of all these things that can be removed, all these flexible materials that don't have strength, flexible people that don't have strength. Build your life around materials that are strong, materials that are mighty. Begin to ask God what? What do you want me to build with? In Genesis chapter 6, the Bible said God was going to destroy the earth, but there was a man that found favor and found grace with God. The Bible says, he tells Noah, he says, Noah, all right, all right, I want you to build this thing. And you have to read the word because the Lord tells Noah, all right, what type of wood to build with? Yo. He knew, glory to God, the distractions that were going to come. He knew the opposition that was going to come. He knew the strength of the storm. Don't you know God knows the strength of your storm? So when God tells you to operate in his principle, when God tells you, see, God, God, sometimes we think, God, God, somebody's trying to tell us what to do. God knows the strength of the storm. He knows the strength of the storm. So when he tells you to pray without ceasing, when he tells you to confess his word, when he tells you to love and to forgive, he knows the strength of the storm that's going to come in your lifetime. So what he's doing all along is he is telling me what to build with so that when the storm comes, I won't be moved. Y'all ain't talking. He knows it. All right, so he tells me, operate in this principle, just make sure you do this. I know it's inconvenient. I know it's uncomfortable. I know you got to move around this to honor what I tell you to do. All right, but just do it because, all right, I want to make sure that what you're building is strong. I want to make sure your frame is strong. Now, see, if, if Noah had been, you know, mindful, I'm talking about human mindful, he would have built with something that water would have come tied and that water would have towed that ark up. 
and not only tore that ark up, but destroyed everything that was in it. And you don't have time to build on something flexible and something God God degradable. Y'all ain't talking here today. Go to God, and then and then when a storm comes, you and everything you work for is gone, and your family's gone, and everybody that was depending on you is gone. God tells them what to build with. And God made sure he had enough gopher wood. All right, right around him to build the thing with. And he made sure he had resources. Don't you tell me God would not give seed to the sower. And sometimes God does give seed to us to build in the honor his principle with. But we have God, God, our life is so upside down that we don't even have the priority to understand when it gets in my hands what to do with it first. He said, bread, he said, I, he said, I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He, he tells Noah what to build with. And he tells Noah the measurements and everything because he knows the strength of the storm. Watch this. He, he, Mama, he doesn't just know the strength of the storm, but he also knows how long he, Noah's going to be on the water. See, see, some, sometimes we're only impatient because we have not honored the Henry, the principle of God. So now we want to come off the water. But see, Noah, 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 Noah was okay. He might have not wanted to be on the water, but he was okay. Why? Because he was in something that was sustaining him. <laughs> well, everybody was floating on their back. Y'all ain't talking here screaming and hollering he might have not been wanted he might have not wanted to be on the water but one thing he didn't know was i'm in safety and one day these waters going to recede and i'm going to walk on the thing that i used to walk out on i need somebody to say amen to that because there's some things you haven't been walk on, been able to walk on in a long time god said you about to walk right back on it but i want you to stay in my principle janita i want you to stay in my word i want you to follow what i told you because if you jump out of my principle now you're going to be in the water just like everybody else Y'all ain't talking, and the thing that's sustaining you, even through some of the hell and stuff you're going through right now, is because you in the principle. Y'all ain't talking here. You honoring the principle. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And some of you feel like you're anchoring in water, but if you honor the principle of God a little more, God will bring your feet out of water. You'll be just like Jesus. Glory to God telling Peter, bid me to come, Peter. God said, come on. You'll walk right on that water. Your feet won't be in it. Somebody said, my feet's about to be out of this thing. Because you're not drowning. Glory to God. But you, Lord God, you under a little more water than you want to. Talk to me here today. I said, you might not be drowning, but you under a little more water than you want to. You ever went into the pool and your mama told you to stay in three feet? But no, you won't be grown. You know you couldn't swim. So you kind of scoot over over in six feet. Lord God, and you get to that point where you stand on your tippy toes. Y'all ain't talking here trying to drag yourself back in the four feet. Y'all ain't talking here. And your chin is right above that water. And you feel your body floating into the deep side. And you praying trying to drag yourself back hoping somebody see you. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. The print, this is how the principle of God is. The principle of God says, stay in the three feet. Stay, you know, stay, stay, stay on the solid ground. Stay on these steps. All right, stay in the part. All right, stay on the solid. Good times. I'm moving on up. Y'all ain't all right to the east side. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't hearing this? You, all right, I don't have to listen to God no more. I don't have to pray no more. Oh, yeah, I served to get there, but I don't think I have to keep serving to stay there no more. But let me tell you, when God starts to bring your feet out of that water, I want that to be your confirmation that the principle of God works. So that means stay in the principle of God so it can continue to work for you. Somebody said, I want it to continue to work for me. Listen, I'm almost done because this, this ain't my key. I'm just talking about the Holy Ghost to you. Now, now look here. All right, back to Exodus chapter 25. All right, all right. The Bible says, he, Moses tells the people, bring something, bring yourself, bring something, all right, to offer to me. Bring something to offer to me. He says, why? 
Because even though they've seen my presence and my demonstration before, he said, this time, I need you guys to catch this by the Holy Ghost now. This might not be my longest of messages, but this is a good, good, good one right here. <laughs> he said, you have seen me do some good things. How many have seen God do some good things? He said, you have seen me do some good things, right? He said, but this time, I don't just want my goodness to be in me passing by. He said, I want you to build a structure in my life, in your life, all right, where my presence can come down and dwell with you. <laughs> Not these run, pass by type of blessings no more. Hmm? Hmm? Not these things just, you know, you know, it's good while it was lasted type of things. He says, I want to pull something down in your life that stays there. He tells Moses what to build, the materials, how to build it, the measurements. Moses sees it, brings it down, and he starts to build with it. And then God's presence stays with his people in that tabernacle. What, what, what are you saying, Holy Spirit? Honor the principle of God. Find the principle of God for every part of your life. Build up some structure. And God says, if you build a structure, if you build somewhere for me to live in, I'll live there. I'll live there. And while I'm living there, I'll take care of everything concerning that house. Y'all don't hear. I, I, he, said, I, he said, I'll take care of everything concerning that house. And even in the word of God, the Bible says, the land I bring you to, the land I live in with you, I take care from the beginning of the year all the way to the end. And everything in that year, everything in that land I take care of. He even said in his word, beloved of God, if you come to the hill of the Lord, I will make the places around but my hill a blessing and there will be showers of blessing. Why? What, what am I going to do when I leave here? I'm going to build some structures in my life. I'm going to build some more structures. And, and you know, the resources that I've been using that's been flexible, that have not been concerning or according to the word of God, I'm trashing those things. And I'm, I'm putting up some strong materials based on principle power. If you obey the principle of God and you give him somewhere to live in, because he honors what he said. And I know we love God and we, we got Jesus in our heart, but God honors what he said. And you're trying to get God to come in your finances, trying to get God to come in business, trying to get God to come in your family, trying to get God to come in some of these other aspirations and dreams. And we are trampling his principle. And he says, I can't come. I can't live in a place where I'm not wanted. Oh, 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 oh. He said, I can't live in a place where I'm not wanted. And every time you don't set up these principles that I place in my word in your life, you are telling me, you know, no trespass. No trespass sign. You do not have legal access to come in my finances this way. You don't have legal access to come in my family this way. The Bible said the reason why God chose Abram was because he knew that Abram would teach his children the word of God. He knew, he knew he could come in Abram's family because Abram would teach his children the word of God. And you want God to come in your family, but you never minister no word to him? <laughs> you, you, you talk to me. Get those no trespass signs off of your life. Father, I'm going to order my life around your principles and under your principles. He said, have no other God before me. That simply means, all right, take the principle of, principles of God and everybody and everything else has to come under what God told you. Yeah. Under what you I said under. You don't, don't take care of God after. Honor God first. And if you cause me to dishonor God, then you cannot be in my life. You cannot be in my world if you cause me to dishonor God. Oh, no, no, I can't dishonor God because I need this newfound favor to connect with principles so I can see some new manifestation. Amen. I've already got the favor. I've just got to, I've just got to apply it to the principle and build some structure in my life. Uh-huh. 
And when people see you, they'll see a structured person instead of some flimsy, flopsy person. Oh, you understanding? All right, y'all got that? Well, good, because I'm done. Praise God, let's stand. Hallelujah.